Okay, so thanks everyone for joining. Uh, the first thing for today's community call that we wanted to go over was uh, Kobe's designs for the workflow for the OSF integration. So he has a whimsical board that kind of describes what we're thinking about designing and building out in order to help with these uh, like data and uh, pre-registration verifications. Kobe, you frozen? Well, um, <clears throat> deployed to staging, but let me stop. Seems to be killing my network. Uh, okay, can you guys hear me now? Perfect. Okay, let me turn <clears throat> my camera off because I think it's kind of killing the bandwidth for some reason. Um, okay, still good, right? Yeah, sounds great. Okay, let me share my screen. Can you guys see it? It's looking good. Yes. Okay, good, good, good. <clears throat> um, yeah, so so as Joyce, let me give you guys a little bit of information. So as Joyce mentioned, we're trying to get this um, uh, basically claim verification. Well, we're trying to get like a whole peer review system going with uh, research job in the long run, but as a first step, we're starting with uh, a claims verification. So I've been, um, we've been doing some thinking and, um, you know, as we met with OSF, we collaborated, then um, as a next step, I put together this whimsical, which I want to share with you guys, get your feedback. And once we do that, I'm going to give it, um, we're going to hand it over to an actual designer to make this look good because it does not look good but it does get the point across so yeah let me zoom in a little bit so basically the big idea is that we're going to have a claims verification um feature integrated into research hub so that that means like um basically with uh when when a paper when a preprint is uploaded to osf you guys probably know this uh, better than i do um, the author gets to input a bunch of data. So some of this data is like, does the paper have, uh, have been pre-registered? And then the author needs to supply uh, OSF with the pre-registration link. And then another data point is like, um, is, it pu is public data being used? So th there is a few claims. The point is there's gonna be a bunch of claims that we want to independently verify um, <clears throat> on research hub so the ux the way it's going to work well the way is like uh, we're brainstorming it would work is is basically um, on the paper page there's going to be a, a kind of like a, a banner at the top so you know to entice people to let them know that hey there is a new feature for claims verification um click here to verify the claims of this paper and as you can see here there is also like this like really <clears throat> terrible icon but it gets the point across of like indicating the number of people who have verified the claims of the paper um, so it's it's at the top because the top section is where we represent the state of the paper of like, um, you know, number of comments, number of upvotes, et cetera. So now we have a number of claims verification. So anyway, sorry to like uh, give you guys maybe too much information. So let me just jump right into it. So you click verify, right? And what's gonna happen is there's gonna be a model. Um, I'm gonna skip this uh, section for now, but what's gonna happen is there's going to be a model it's gonna show up, uh, claim verification model. It's gonna say something like, here's the paper uh, you're intending to verify the claims of. These are the authors. And then maybe some like a, a couple of bullet points saying something like, help us improve science by verifying the claims of this paper, completing the claims of 
uh, verification may earn you RSC. Um, learn more how we can do it. And then some like uh, maybe some information like why are we doing this? Maybe like to go into more detail. Uh, so anyway, you click start and then you begin the process. It's a, a series of steps. Each screen represents like one claim to be verified. So in this case, we're verifying like uh, public data. So the author claim uh, that public data, a public data set is used and that's like inputted during the OSF like preprint upload process. So as a person verifying the claim, you can say like yes or no, um, and then maybe some information about what is considered public data. I uh, click continue, you move on to the next uh, phase. In this case, like uh, the claim is pre-registration. So the author claims that the pre-registration is available. Um, and you get to say whether the claim is accurate or not. Um, and maybe some a little bit more information about what, how do you to go about verifying a pre-registration? And you know the final step is like uh, once you've gone through like all the claims that could be verified, we want to really collect like your final thoughts because the point of it is <clears throat> is to actually get the author to um, you know revise the paper if needed and uh, to like engage in a meaningful dialogue in order to, to get to the bottom of what needs to happen in order for them to revise the paper. So this is like some uh, like uh, qualitative data. So if this was a quantitative like uh, yes, no, blah, 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 here you supply some quantitative information, um, qualitative, um, and, and what happens is the output of this model um, is generated into a essentially like a, a special comment. So you have like this is the discussion. This is this area right here refers to the discussion section of the paper page, which you know you've all seen it right now. It looks like um, like this, right? It's only got it's only got comments, but we're thinking of changing it into something like discussion and discussion may include comments, but also claims verification. So it ends up here, you can see like this person approved the claims of the author about a day ago, they approved the public data claim, they approved the pre-registration claim, and they earned some RSC, and we can talk about like what, how to go about this. And as an example, like we also have like, you know, you can have like a filter for like all comments or claims verification where you get to see, select what you want to see. In this case, we're seeing everything. Therefore, you're also seeing a regular comment. And below it is just an example of like what it means for like a, a claims verification that is not gone through successfully. You can see that um, Anton, here you go. You challenge the claims of this author, right? Um, public data claim good maybe um, and then like pre-registration pre maybe not did not get approved and maybe here um, the reviewer we're indicating here reviewer has left a comment that the link was not good and then the author like replied back so there is a meaningful dialogue that's happening here um, <clears throat> And obviously, like one thing I forgot to mention is that the author will get notified as soon as you leave a comment, sorry, as soon as you leave like a claims verification on the paper so they can be aware of it and they can resolve um, what needs to be done. But let me pause here. Let me confirm that you guys can still hear me. And you guys, have you guys heard everything I was saying? Yeah, that was perfect. Thank you, yep. Billy. Um, cool, uh, nice. The, the final thing I would say is that like this example that I did was kind of inspired by GitHub because in GitHub you can, not sure if like you've, you've all seen it, but you have uh, essentially like a timeline that includes comments and reviews in one timeline. And within a review, you can also have like a bunch of comments that the author and the reviewer um, you know, can engage in. 
And I think that we can kind of like use the same paradigm here. So um, yeah, let me pause here and maybe like get some, some of your thoughts, some of your initial thoughts. I have a question. So if back to the last stage with, with the comment section. So how would the flow work? Like, so in, in this, in the bottom one where uh, I both verified and disproved the public data or the bottom one is supposed to be pre-registration? Mm -hmm. So like uh, this right here? No, the, fir the third one, the, the public data is twice, right? The bottom one, is it just supposed to be pre-registration? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, this is um, supposed to be yeah. like, uh, yeah, it was a typo. Okay. And so, yeah, so I would be like, I would be one of the verifiers and I would check the public data, but say that the, there is no pre-registration, there's something wrong with it. Yeah, exactly. Would there be a way to challenge someone else? It's like if I found a person who, I don't know, I won't say abuses or just, it just I did, obviously didn't do the job, right? Is there a way, and, and they claim that everything is correct, can you somehow mm -hmm. challenge them? Yeah, so what I'm thinking of right now, and I wanted to get your thoughts, so there is a few ways to do it. There is the first and most obvious way is to flag it um, to like a moderator. And and like the other, the other layer to it is that the RSC, like I'm thinking that at least for this starting, like at least at the beginning, like RSC is not going to be distributed automatically upon claims verification because if we do that, we're going to run into a situation, like you said, Anton, like maybe someone um, doesn't deserve like this RSC because they, they've, um, what do you call it, like uh, abusing it or not doing it properly. So we, I want to make sure that the people who are completing this uh, claims verification know that only some claims verification will actually earn RSC, and that is to be decided by, like, the research hub community. I'm not saying, like, you know, I, I have, like, a great idea of, like, how we're going to do it, but this is not a guaranteed. And I think as a challenge, what we can do is... Um, we can have a comment. You can also leave a comment to every review. So in this case, you you just left a uh, comments here. You can also do it here. There's going to be a a button that I did not include that allows you to reply back. Um, and also, you can use the downvote feature to downvote the uh, the claims verification. How many verifications can a paper have? Is there a limit, or can it be infinite? I don't know. I, I think like when I was thinking about that, I had like a long drive over the past week, but I was thinking about it in the car. I think why maybe we don't limit it because it's kind of like a, an Amazon review. You can have as many reviews as you want. Uh, maybe the best reviews will earn RSC, but anyone can actually do it. I also it feel... Go ahead, Patrick. This, is, this will be like a, a V1. And we'll have like after a couple of months, we'll have user data where like maybe reviews are happening too much on one preprint and we need to like have a sliding scale after like the fifth review, the rewards start to go down or something like that. But th this is just the, the first version where we can then iterate on it in order to like improve some of the complications in the future. Okay. It, it just feels like it, that this function by like it, it, it's a minimal product right you just want to make sure that people see that they exist right the pre-registration exists the public data exists the users not necessarily will be able to intellectually comprehend the quality of those right so the pre-registration might be like riddled with uh, deviations from the actual research right and or or something and uh, the non-trained user probably won't be able to notice it so this has the function of like human drones in a way right they they will they will go and do the supplementary work labor right to make sure everything is in order they're 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 complicated ais <laughs> Mm -hmm. So in yeah, this yeah. regard, it, I think it would make sense to kind of like conclude it. Like after 
you somehow make sure that there has been enough verifications and the, the consensus in the comment section is that everything is a-okay, -okay. no, no, no things need to be done. I think it just can like be removed from this particular post, the, the, the claim feature. Yeah, I think, yeah, I'm, I'm honestly not sure. I'm kind of on the fence. I t definitely get what you're saying. And I think to mitigate that, we, what I want to do, I want to talk to Joyce about this, is not distribute RSC automatically because I don't want like a Ticketmaster AI just like completing a claims verification and just earning RSC for it. And, and, and yeah, like there is the point you just made, Anton, of maybe like, we're not actually like reviewing the paper. Maybe like uh, as soon as like one claim is sufficient, maybe we lock it down. Um, but then again, there is the this like human element of like providing some comment on the registration, which I'm not sure if we should limit. I don't. I don't know. Um, but maybe before we talk about that, I know we don't have a lot of time. I want to <clears throat> quickly ask you guys: Does it? Like and also Joyce, like uh, we we're going to basically verify at this point, as far as I can see, two claims: whether a public data set was used and whether the the paper is a pre-registration available. Do we need to, um, as far as pre-registration goes, and also public data set? Like, how is the person verifying going to determine that? Like the output is like a yes, no, but w what do they need to actually do to determine that? It's kind of related to the point. I It wasn't clear to me, uh, you know, whether the link to the paper is available all the time while uh, the user is on this pop-up. So that should be like, because I need to click that paper uh, when I'm on this mm -hmm. pop-up. So that's like first step, but that's a good point. Like next step, like what are you, are you verifying? Yeah, imagine yeah. imagine you just go to the to the folder and there are five Excel files that are named one, two, three, and four and five. And okay. inside you find rows of numbers that make no sense to you. What do you do? Exactly. Like do you do it on the preprint? Is do you is it sufficient to only look at the PDF and look if whether like public data set was referenced, for example, or do you need to go into the actual files? Oh no, that's not. I, I don't think that's what they mean. Or if the it's not that the they use public data; they made their data public. They upload oh, it to oh, their oh, OSF oh, file. Yeah. Okay. 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 Got it. Yeah. I wasn't quite sure what they meant, but yeah, that makes they, sense. I interpreted it differently. They yeah. basically it, it's kind of a glorified or GitHub basically, and they have their folder and they should have their, their program. Well, you actually don't have the materials, right? You just do two badges, not three, right? You skipped one. Uh, but there should be files in that in that folder, right? And there should be file with mm -hmm. a pre-registration there as well. Okay. Um, yeah, no, that makes sense. But what about, I thought that the pre-registration is like hosted on OSF and there's going to be like a link to it. You guys... It is, yes. Okay. It can be found in several places on OSF, but there, yes, there is a place with a special link. Okay, cool. I'll definitely talk to Joyce about that. I, I want to like iron it out. Um, any other comments, guys? Anything? Um... Just a small yeah. remark. Um, how will the authors claim a claim? Let's say, um, is, it, is it imported from OSF or how does it work? How would the authors claim a claim? Oh, like, yeah, uh, like, yeah, how would they claim, for instance, there was um, like uh, the, the preprint uh, or oh, the pre registration, like or uh, the public data set that uh, they claim there is a public, they use a public data set. Yeah, 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 yeah. That happens. Paper, on or... the... Yeah, so on the OSF side, when they upload like a preprint, mm -hmm. They like um, put all this data right here. Okay, see. So we have it uh, by the time it gets to us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if bundling together different claims is particular, like the best UX, uh, and maybe 
me as a user, I want to just verify one thing, and maybe I just want to verify pre-registration of data, uh, and just for the sake of future proofing, bundling things could be uh, a more confusing mm -hmm. way to uh, implement things than just doing one claim at a time. And uh, mm -hmm. because also if they're bundled, uh, like data and uh, pre-registration, maybe because I haven't even looked at uh, pre-registration, I just want to verify data, uh, maybe say yes or no. So for the other things, I want to say like, well, I don't know. I even haven't spent time. It's not just a yes or no. Mm -hmm. I didn't bother, but I can claim that there is, uh, I can verify that there is data, for example. But for pre-registration, somebody else mm. can take for that. Yeah, no, I think, I think uh, Dragon, it's a very good point because I think it also goes hand in hand with like, in the third screen, like I have like a, just like a free for all, you can just type in a comment. And ideally you'd have one for each one because like you might wanna type a comment about the pre-registration. You might wanna ask the author about that and not just about both things. Um, yeah, so, you could yeah. definitely do okay. that and just have like two sections uh, mm -hmm. while writing the comment. But yeah, maybe just having them uh, each separately uh, could be. Yeah, I'll way. think about it for sure. Um, I, yeah, totally. Um, whatever solution we do, we'll probably just uh, make it so it's enticing for the user to do both, but they can maybe opt out and just do one. Makes yeah, you could, cool. you could. In, in inherit OSF structure, right? They have free badges and basically your papers can have like, a, let's say faded silhouettes of three badges or two badges if you only do two. And you, if you click on it, you can make it happen for this particular paper, one badge at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Anton, can you send me like an example of like a paper that's got the badges? Like, uh, I don't think- uh, Here, I can send you the link to the badges themselves. <laughs> Yeah, and the badges themselves. So I think it'll be really useful for me because I do want to be have yeah. some kind of consistency <coughs> with OSF. There you go. Nice. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I know we're kind of like over time, so I'll stop sharing. I know Joey said <laughs> only is only five minutes to talk about other stuff. Sorry, Joey. Yeah, that was amazing. Thank you, Kobe. And then thank you everybody for sharing that feedback. Our plan is to incorporate it and then ship it off to OSF either later today or tomorrow. So that was awesome. Thank you. Yeah, um, thanks, guys. The next thing I want to talk about is we did our quarterly board meeting for Research Hub last Friday. And one of the things we chatted about is that um, in general, uh, the board is super excited about kind of the early community and like particularly you guys here in these community calls sharing like these ideas and stuff. And so we want to try and like kind of build things from more grassroots perspective. I think, I think I mentioned earlier, part of the thought process was if we build a product that's good enough, the people will come, but we're kind of thinking that it may be worth investing in actually trying to build the community. So for example, one thing that Brian did over the weekend was donate to Dr. Bick's Patreon. Dr. Bick is someone who does like scientific integrity and um, creates content that would be amazing to have on Research Hub. So I wanted to open it up and see if you guys have any ideas and how we can invest like, like, you know, significant amounts of money, but not like crazy stuff, like a couple thousand dollars in trying to like um, help to grow basically the people who attend these calls and create content on Research Hub, whether it's supporting people like Dr. Bix Patreon or maybe like having a like a small grant competition for research projects or just wanted to open it up to see if anybody had any ideas. And then I'll probably follow up next week with some like potential things we could implement. Do a grad student conference. I think we talked about this idea. With hefty prizes, they'll be amazed. So can you go into more details of what, like a grad student conference, what would that entail? Uh, depends on how ambitious you are in terms of organizing. The easiest way would be, Nami, help me out if I'm saying dumb things, to do maybe a poster. 
section or something, maybe even in Gather Town. It could be virtual. So you would need to do some sort of call to action and send it to, I don't know, through some channels. I don't know how people, maybe, maybe try to talk to PSA people or the SIPs people. Remember the, the, the organizers, maybe they can share their channels. But yeah, you could be like, yeah, it can be on any topic, on any project that you're currently working on, especially if you plan to publish it eventually. There, there is a form, there is a word limit, and that's it. And then we, ha we have a prize pool or something in each category or in, to in total based on the, which one is the most upvote it you, you can you can integrate it in research hub right that would be really awesome that would showcase how research hub can work the most upvoted one gets a prize and then you should probably have the expert committee also ha ha hand out some prizes as well yeah i was thinking this is a great opportunity for a DAO vote like in theory if we want to have the DAO vote eventually allocate funding like you're totally right like we could have like most popular as measured via upvotes like most popular maybe like most supported and then we could have like uh, a DAO vote weighted by research coin holdings to distribute like a cash prize to whatever, you know, the community thought was their favorite. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. That's and imagine, you know how sometimes on Facebook you see like, oh, hey, hey, guys, my nephew is competing in this thing. Can you please leave a like because they'll, they'll win something. Now, the thing with the research hub is, is if people want to abuse it, They'll have to invite their friends over to <laughs> sign up for research how first. Best case scenario. And then we can even like for the people who show up for that kind of thing, like we can be like, hey, claim your other papers and like refer other authors. Mm -hmm, and we can, mm -hmm. we can try and like create a viral loop that way. Make and it make create an illusion that this is temporary and is a scarce resource. Do it just for the uh, for participants in the conference. It's a one-time offer, a super referral program. If you refer an actual academic or something, they claim their profile, they get an extra, extra RSC. It, never it, again, never again, one-time one offer. It's an amazing idea because that's even, it, it's so much better than just giving away money. Like if we do the virtual town thing, like the gather town, like you said, it's actually like building relationships between people and stuff. That's a, I like that a lot. That's a great idea. Does anybody else have any thoughts? Just kind of like one thing I was thinking was even like content creation grants. Like I know um, there's somebody on Twitter called the health nerd. His name is Gideon something. I spoke with him once on the phone, but uh, does like uh, tweets about epidemiology papers and criticizes them. And I think there are a decent amount of people who are creating content like that, where we could, you know, like give them a little bit of money for the appreciation and say like, hey, like, you know, give us some feedback on Research Hub and maybe share your content here too. Um, yeah, I haven't like totally uh, formulated ideas here, but anything else that you guys come up with would be awesome. Would it be tricky? I don't know if that's possible, but tricky to like write on to other society's effort and just like issue the award because people are doing that some kind of award already. And some awards are like, I'm thinking about SIPs, but uh, they are like focused on underappreciated um, like projects and they are giving out, but like, can we have like some like, money and just like. <laughs> have publicity but it won't sign up that they, they are not necessarily sign up but like there there might be something just kind of inter in terms of interfacing others and kind of outreach perspective or maybe i'm just like dreaming do you have an example i'm thinking of like the i'm sure you've heard of this but it's like the idgore people like that that group of scientists in uh bali who are doing like the non-academic science thing yeah, Igdor, yeah, that's a great uh, example. Yeah, yeah, they, they might be happy to hear from the interface. I don't know. I've never talked to with, with the people, yeah, so. They're really cool. The, the, I, I've never talked to them specifically, but a few people who are part of it, and they're all, like, really interesting people. Yeah, that, that sounds nice. I'll send the information about the SIPS uh, award, too. Okay, cool. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I love the grad student conference idea. I think that's awesome. Do you, do you think it'd be okay to limit it to just grad students? Like, can, 
I'm oh, gonna... absolutely. Adults have already earned their money. Just yeah. and also, I think I think the grad students are going to be your most active population by far, by far. I kind of agree. I always go back to like my initial thesis, like when I first started working on all this stuff was like when I was in a lab and I had 40 minutes while gel was running, I wanted to go and earn $10 in order to like get dinner. And so I think you're right. Like the, the grad students in that situation, you know, they're the ones who actually need the money to go buy dinner. <laughs> so, so Navi doesn't have to be a, a, a cheap Italian <laughs> as we <laughs> mentioned during the podcast, but, but, um, but yeah, no, that's a, it's a great idea. Um, I'll, I'll, kind of work on that idea a little bit more and I'll, I'll coordinate with you Anton and see if we can come up with a cool plan. And then the last thing that I wanted to talk about was that um, the board wants to come to these community calls, um, like one member at a time. So like Brian, um, Max Hodak, who's the guy from Neuralink, he's working on a new project now. And then Rob Reinhardt, who's uh, the Soylent founder. Um, wouldn't we have the board members attend? Curious, like, what you guys would be most interested in like do you want to ask them questions and like learn about their perspective on like science in general and research hub or would it be better to just do our normal community calls and have them contribute as just regular community members i'm like, curious like how, how would you all get the most out of having them attend definitely being able to ask them the question would be cool, uh, but I don't think that would be the point, like the great uh, use of time on community calls. So uh, having them contribute as kind of regular, uh, you know, just people that are discussing different topics on community calls could be cool because they have different kind of insights than we do. Uh, they have some other types of uh, industry experience or whatever it may be. So it would be useful kind of to get the different uh, views for a specific topic included and them as well uh, as offering some of their insights. So yeah, something like that. Yeah, it would be nice if they could, I mean, I imagine all of them have uh, similar, but they have their own priorities and what they, why they want to accelerate science and everything. Would be nice if they did like a five minute spiel about their vision, like what what specifically they want research hub evolve into it, like in, in 10 years, let's say, that would be interesting to hear. You know, that's a great idea. Cause um, so for our last two board meetings, uh, Anton and Philip have made videos about what accelerating science means to them and we show it to the board. So it'd be kind of cool to have the board come back and say what accelerating science means to, to them, to you guys. So yeah. I, so, so what I'm thinking is maybe like, we normally have three topics. So like the first one can be, you know, accelerating science for them and like a Q and A, and then, you know, two short things after that, where we can actually talk about like what's going on in the project in the last week and get feedback. Uh, Sounds good. Just to ask, is the idea for them to be on every community call or like once in a while or just once at all? I think that we'll, I think that once they do it once, they'll be coming back. I think we've got some pretty good energy here. And so um, I, I imagine that it will start to become a more regular thing. But uh, just in the board meeting, we decided that it's good to have a more concerted effort to have like the leadership body, you know, come and like interface with the community in order to like actually like have a full community. So yeah, I think it ideally like, if we're investing in the community, it's very much worth investing our time as well. So I will heavily suggest that people should show up as much as possible. The other thing too, is we might have to be flexible on the time. So it could be like, we do a second call during those weeks in order to like do something that's convenient for all of you guys and all of them in order to, you know, just make the schedules work, but that's administrative, we can figure that out. Cool. Um, yeah, so those are all the topics that I had for this week. Do you guys have anything else for us? So one thing that I noticed that kind of well, went below the radar perhaps uh, was the ability to post kind of new things besides comments, uh, like Kobe was showing, uh, inspired also by GitHub uh, 
I'm not even timelines, and then being able to upload to different types of content and like working on that and uh, just adding new features uh, on top of claims and perhaps other things uh, that you could upvote as well and then earn from those uh, as well is an interesting one. And I think kind of figuring the UX for the uh, claims will be much more important actually than just for claims. Uh, so it's a totally interesting uh, kind of set of additions that isn't specific to uh, claims only. So yeah, that was fun. I could not agree more. Like, I think this is the first baby step in towards like maybe what actually brings us the product market fit. Because even in a paper, right, like a paper is making a claim and sometimes the evidence really supports it well and sometimes the evidence doesn't support it well. And so having the ability for like crowdsourced verification of, hey, does this data actually support what the authors say the conclusion is? I think would be super powerful. So I, I totally agree. I think there's a lot of directions this could go and most of them are more compelling than what we're currently doing. Yeah, and uh, not just for claims, but in general, like adding different kind of supplementary materials and content uh, that can also earn you some additional uh, coins is super useful and just opens a lot of doors. So yeah, I'm totally excited about that one, actually. Like not so much about claims, that is definitely cool because of the integration with OSF, uh, but that ability to kind of start working on the different kinds of editions and different kinds of content uh, beside the comments is extremely powerful one. Cool. Yeah, is there anything in particular, Dragon, that you're, uh, any particular supplementary thingy that you're thinking about? Like, we've been thinking about the claims verification and then like at some point peer reviews. Is there anything else in your mind that? Yeah, uh, exactly. Like peer reviews is one, like it opens uh, the UX side of things uh, and probably like at the implementation feature level uh, on the back end and front end, like how do you integrate actually peer reviews and actually pay people for them? Uh, Obviously, I'm thinking of different uh, supplementary materials that I'm trying to add to papers through my own startup. Uh, so yeah, what, what whatever those are, I'm thinking about those as well. But for the sake of Research Hub, peer review is probably the biggest one uh, there because th that is where the heavy lifting and uh, a lot of effort and time for people uh, goes in uh, and they should be rewarded for it. So this is kind of an interesting path towards exactly that. Cool, yeah, thank you. Do you all have like another two or three minutes? I wanted to, to ask for feedback about the hypothesis feature. Have you all been able to take a look at this? I'll, I'll screen share and uh, um, just kind of walk through it really quick, see what you think. I've added two so far, and I think this is like a pretty early V1, like it's definitely not ideal yet. So yeah, just curious uh, what you all think so far. So this is a, a conversation that uh, Anton and I were having kind of in the comments of a paper. The idea is there's a hypothesis, some details kind of like explaining the hypothesis, and then you can add papers and there can be crowdsourced like addition of more sources and then uh, basically reviews of how relevant the sources are. So yeah, I'd curious if anybody had been able to play around with this and if you had any thoughts on like what could make it better. The sources are not clickable. Yeah, totally. I mean, that's a huge deal. Um, I pinged Calvin today, so it seemed like it was going to be an easy fix. Hopefully, that'll be in there within the next 24 hours or so. And then the years, too, is pretty ridiculous. So, so hopefully, <laughs> it'll be more accurate as well. Do you all think it I mean, it's... Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, you can go first, then I'll, I'll follow up. No, I... Mm, well, I think definitely it's going to be, and we should accept that it's going to be a messy instrument, right? Because uh, it involves debates, it involves opinions, and it involves cherry picking. So, but I think it, it's okay, right? As long as we treat it as a, I don't know, how do you envision it? Do you envision this as a person looks up on the internet? Should I use this type of shampoo for hair loss prevention or not? Well, what is the current consensus on whether this can be done? And they go on, on, on Research Hub and they look up this hypothesis and they 
they use it as, as a direction to do things or not do things? Or do you more view it as a, okay, guys, nobody knows, let's discuss. So in my own mind, I view it the way that you said it, where I think that eventually these hypotheses will be tied to questions. So the question will be, uh, like, can you use uh, a certain shampoo to prevent hair loss. And then there would be hypotheses that say, yes, shampoo X can be used to prevent hair loss. Here are the studies that support that hypothesis. And people can comment on whether the studies actually are relevant for like the claim that the hypothesis makes. Yeah. Yeah. Anton, did you share, were you the one that shared like this? Uh, I don't know the name of the product, but it was like something with octopus that, you have like a thing with like a, it's like a breadcrumb trail of like question, hypothesis, like something, paper. So multiple we people, yeah, multiple people share that throughout, <laughs> throughout okay. the time. Okay. So there is uh, the octopus and there is a uh, mimosa, was it? Uh, you know, dragon mm -hmm. shared mimosa. But I don't know, if, is mimosa alive yet? No. No, I looked at that. That was very useful, a uh, dragon. Uh, yeah, it's not live. Okay. Okay. Definitely get back to people and say thanks for inspiration or something like that. Uh, <laughs> well, one piece of uh, feedback that I had, I'm extremely confused by this slider thingy. I literally don't know how to read it. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> that that's it. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree because it's not clear whether it's like, yes, these papers are relevant to the hypothesis or yes, these papers prove the hypothesis. Yeah, they yeah, do uh, like like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, go. No, you go ahead. That's exactly what I thought. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I'm now looking at it and like uh, it, it's green, but it's partially green. It has this circle <laughs> in the middle. And I, I don't know what the information that it's trying to convey is exactly. Uh, I This text, like 100% of researcher thinks, yes, that is kind of very useful um just summary uh but then what the slider is doing there is just for the visual effect uh and like why is not that conveyed in the text or why it should be separate uh and because you can expect to see a lot of those they should kind of convey some meaningful and different information that you can't see then in this kind of small text that you see as a summary so yeah just part of that because i'm not sure literally what the information there is if that's the consensus, maybe the slider thing would be like a picture of the human being and the kind of gradation in the gray to like something like that would be more clear. Yeah, I was also confused. I clicked around and uh, I submitted my response and I was never able to change it. So <laughs> one thing, I, yeah, there are some users like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We... I... Oh, go ahead, Anton. I wonder if... if... Yeah, I, I, the consensus thing, I think, needs overhaul. First of all, I would ditch the neutral option. Like, neutral option serves no function. If you have neutral opinion, just just keep walking. <laughs> Why even clicking things? If it's neutral, go away. Uh, and I think right now, like Dragon said, it's it's unclear. Is it is it that it's relevant or is it that it supports the original claim of the hypothesis right so and i think it should say that like like 66 percent of researchers think yes but what what yes think that this is evidence in favor of the hypothesis or like yeah that this this supports this hypothesis so i think it should mention specifically the word hypothesis or something and then the, the red would be this actually disproves the hypothesis and so ba basically you don't get information whether it's relevant in the slider i think you should have a separate kind of like a, just a flag like if you think this is irrelevant to the study to neither supports or disproves just click this flag it's not on the slider it's like it's not even part of the computation it's just going to like after a certain threshold it's just going to discount the paper or something a way that I had thought about this before, which we didn't uh, build into this version, but I almost think it would be better if there were two columns of like supporting sources 
and like not rejecting, but like not supporting sources. And then those could be upvoted. So if I wanted to read like the most relevant, like source that disproves this, you know, I'm thinking like for ivermectin, right? Like there's plenty of papers that say ivermectin work. There's plenty of papers that say ivermectin doesn't work, right? So like I would look at all the supporting, see what's upvoted, what's the most relevant, what's the second most relevant third, and then see what's disproving, what's the most relevant, second most relevant, whatever. Oh, that's, I think that would be good. And also you mm -hmm. could, you could, if you want to ask, do a slider, you can do the slider, like how impactful do you think this is? Like if, if it's against the hypothesis, is it like super, is it like breaking the theory entirely? Then it's 10 out of 10, or is it like minor inconvenience, possibly if Luke, then it's a one out of 10. Yeah, after hearing that suggestion of kind of two columns or just general two categories and one is kind of trying to uh, verify and the other to disprove, like that makes so much more sense to me, uh, like what to expect, what it is that it's happening. And uh, I would then suggest like remove slider thingy uh, completely because now you have like, you don't need uh, percentages because exactly uh, different papers might have different kinds of impact. So just take a look at whatever the most impact, impactful um, thing that is disproving the claim and the most impactful thing that is proving uh, the claim would are and just read those uh, and like don't get into details of well, it it's I don't know it's sixty percent impactful. Let, let the users judge uh, that. And again, like if you were to put sliders, then how are you sure that it's sixty percent or whatever other metric you're trying to use there? Uh, just having two categories makes so much more sense. So yeah, th that that that's a great idea. Cool. Yeah, we have our first. It could be shared. Could be shared. A great example, I think. Awesome. Oh yeah. This is awesome. Um, cool. So we have our first product review uh, with Brian this Friday, looking at the hypothesis feature. So we'll be able to share this feedback and then hopefully implement it for like the version one and a half or so. One other thought that I had that I wanted to run past you guys. Um, this this phrasing of 85% of researchers think yes kind of bothers me because we don't know if people are researchers. You know, like yeah, it's, users. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it should be research of users unless we verify that the people making the claim are researchers in that field. Like we could say like 85% of psychologists think yes, if we keep track of who's a psychologist and like whether they're voting or whatever. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the, the researchers bothers me because it feels like it's um, not fake, but not totally honest. The area Maybe. of expertise verification is a very big pain in the neck. I would not recommend. <laughs> yeah, maybe also changing to something as readers, because we are all here trying to read the documents and just judge for ourselves. Uh, and yeah, it's shorter perhaps than community members or whatever it may be, and less kind of uh, not inclusive by saying users, because yeah, users mm -hmm. is kind of a weird one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Readers is amazing. That's the perfect term. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, thank you guys. That was, that was crazy helpful. That was a little more than two minutes, but thank you so much. And other than that, hypothesis feature actually didn't have the chance to uh, play with it, uh, but looks very interesting. Uh, I, I could definitely see uh, the kind of two categories implementation much more useful and uh, just straightforward. Uh, and definitely, I don't know, mentioning some of these uh, use cases and uh, does a uh, particular shampoo prevent hair loss uh, and things like that. Th that's an interesting flow to discover things and to find useful materials. And like exactly, you could see the most upvoted disproving paper and most uh, useful kind of verifying paper. So th that that is kind of very cool. Uh, if you could, I'm not sure what the plans were to promote this kind of feature how, where, et cetera. I guess we talked in previous community calls, but uh, I don't know what the kind of consensus was there. Uh, so yeah, really looking forward to this one. It's an interesting addition. I wonder if there is a use case where it's not even, if there are two least, if you talk about the two column version, there could be a case where people don't even care if, if these two columns are competing between each other. It could be like, I'll give an example, eye floaters treatment. 
there is currently no legitimate eye flow. Well, there is like the, the, the surgically very risky operation that you can do. And what would be nice if people could compile list, like list of things that kind of work, or at least they show potential that they might work, you know, in the future, they will be developed into full treatments and things that do not work for, for sure. So it could be like just list of things that work versus do not work for the question. So this is, yeah, totally. This is where I'm thinking the question hypothesis structure works well, because the question is, what's the best treatment for eye floaters? The hypotheses are surgery is the best treatment. And then you can have supporting and rejecting evidence for surgery is the best treatment. And then the second one is like, maybe like, you know, uh, eye removal is the second best treatment or whatever. And then you can have like supporting and rejecting for eye removal as the best treatment, you know, so, so that kind of needs the question and then hypothesis structure in order to make that happen. But I was even so thinking- in your, in your example, they are separate, separate posts. In the in my example, they're the same post and they're ranked, right? So the, the people post the like the impactfulness or, or something, and you can go to the best available option immediately and the worst available option immediately, and vice versa. It, it would be interesting because that's I'm thinking like actually practical use case for like patients. You know, if you're like I have cancer or whatever, you know, like what's the best treatment for this cancer, and to have a list of it, like that's like if if you talk about getting clicks, like I think that's a really, really great way to actually get people to pay attention to what's going on. So that's pretty interesting. Yeah, uh, I can agree that creating sort of a compiled list, curated uh, list is useful, uh, definitely. Uh, but kind of the uh, the value hypothesis of the hypothesis feature is kind of very straightforward one. So here's the question that has kind of yes, no, agree, disagree, and we are testing exactly that. And yes, uh, creating sort of a curated lists is um, an abstraction of that kind of functionality, but hypothesis is delivering a very specific value. It's trying to help you answer yes or no, and then perhaps something extending the hypothesis feature or that kind of compiled list thingy uh, where you just have access to different resources compiled by somebody uh, that perhaps like the, those entire collections are upvoted then uh, would be another yeah, just implementation of the idea. Yeah, totally. I was even thinking that this feature is going to be really nice once uh, we release the electronic lab notebook that Thomas is working on, because a lot of labs are like working towards a specific hypothesis and they're creating evidence that it either supports or refutes it. And to be able to cite like even like one experiment and put that in the support or refute column, I think is like really cool even for a lab to be able to keep track of like their own work. So I think this is going to fit really nicely with what Thomas is working on. Cool. Well, thank you guys so much for the extra 25 minutes. This has been amazing. Um, do you all have anything else while we're still here? Cool. Well, yeah, you, you guys are the best. Thank you. Till next week. See everybody. Thank you. Bye.